God to minister to you, just say, Lord, speak to her about me. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Awaken my heart to love and adore thee, oh, my Lord. Awaken my
without but I shall give thee new abilities from within saith the Lord I shall bring new anointings into thy life and those things that have been difficult for thee in the realm of the spirit yea shall become so easy thou shalt know flow of God in thy life for thou hast longed for it and oft times thou hast looked without that thou mayest see a river to step into but the river is within and yea I say this unto thee my people the river shall flow out of the depth of thine own being saith the Lord there shall be such a great and mighty flow from within yea that it shall cause from within the barriers yea that have been built up in thy life yea through thine own training from childhood barriers that have been built up Yea, they shall fall down until thou shalt be one that is able to stand in my presence without limitation, saith the Lord. Thou shalt know a standing in thy God. Yea, thou shalt stand and the river shall flow. Yea, out of thee unto others, yea, and those that it shall bless uh, shall become increasingly large in numbers, saith the Lord. For the river shall be wider uh, and wider and wider with every falling down of barriers. Uh, yea, the river shall broaden uh, from within thee, saith the Lord, until it shall be a great river that no man can pass over, saith the Lord. Yea, I am working in thee. Oh, thou seest not the way that I am working even this day within thee, but I am anointing thee. I am blessing thee. I am ministering unto thee. I am among thee as the servant who serves. And I am serving thee, my people. This day I am washing thy feet from the earth earthly that thou mayest stand in the heaven heavenly, saith the Lord. Yea, I am lifting thee up and thou shalt be greatly lifted up in my glory and shall not be embarrassed at those things that I do in and through thee. For thou shalt know that they are of the Spirit and not of the flesh, 
saith the Lord. He calamonde, oh barishi alamanda, oh baristi alamai. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh risti alamai, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, shiandai. Oh, Rabandiai, oh, Papa Barandai, oh, Yandi B. Hallelujah. I want to read from Isaiah chapter, uh, from Psalm 45. And I'm going to speak a little bit from a song of songs today. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. I, I, I thought that was an interesting word just now when the Lord said He would bring us to the place we wouldn't be embarrassed with what He was doing in and through us. Amen. I think for all of us, there are times that God would move more mightily through us but when he starts to move and work there are oftentimes those uh, limitations because of others even that are sitting by they might be spirit filled I, the thought that can, comes to mind I was I was with brother Sid Roth recently uh, and we were doing a week of taping a week of programs for his radio ministry and the first, we were going to talk about uh, the greatest Aliyah in history concerning the Russian Jews leaving Russia. And of course, the latest word is, is that Israel is about ready to sign a special agreement with the Hungarian airline company Malev and that it's, they're going to bring 1,000 Jews a night from Russia back to Israel. It's a tremendous thing that God's doing. But I was speaking, uh, we were going to speak on this subject and I knew it. Uh, and just on the first program, he, he said, before we start talking about this, I want to ask you a few things. And when he began to ask me a few things, the Spirit of God came into that room and it was so mighty, I could hardly talk. Tears filled my eyes. The blessing of the Lord was so there. And you know, there are times that we almost, we almost want the Lord to lift the anointing a little bit so we can continue to function. Anybody had experiences like that? But I tell you, the day of time is come. He was almost, I think he was almost embarrassed because of the great glory that came down. And uh, when somebody else is embarrassed, you almost get affected by that same uh, feeling. You know, when you expect God to do a little bit and he does a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> you folks know what I'm talking about but God says he's going to bring us and, and you know God lifts it you know he blessed the rest of the programs but it wasn't quite the same as the first one because oftentimes we want to adjust the temperature to be acceptable to people amen when God wants to make it so, hallelujah, that it ministers in that glory realm. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Well, the Lord did say that he was going to, he was going to bring us to the place in God that that embarrassment would not be there. Praise the Lord. I'm reading from Psalm 45, my heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. 
Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh. O most mighty with thy glory and thy majesty. And in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of joy above thy fellows. Hallelujah. I won't read further, but I want to just to start my heart is bubbling over hallelujah my heart is bubbling over with the, the king's matter hallelujah those things pertaining to the king oh my heart has been so awakened amen that my heart is bubbling over with those matters and so much so that that which my heart feels my tongue is responding to amen and my tongue becomes as the pen of a ready writer hallelujah praise the lord as he speaks concerning his tongue being uh, the, the pen uh, of, uh, of a ready writer uh, he begins saying thou art fairer than the children of men grace is poured into thy lips therefore god hath blessed thee forever hallelujah this is speaking prophetically concerning the Lord but I want to say this we are going to see a release in the ability to express ourselves concerning the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and it is not a release that comes from the mind or from the intellect nor even from the abilities of the natural amen hallelujah I have seen people that had no natural abilities of expression when the Holy Ghost was upon them oh the beauty that came forth in their declarations and descriptions of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the Lord it takes a bubbling up from within to release graceful words such as thou art fairer <laughs> than the children of men amen we are living especially in an age first that's very busy and we don't have time for such nice phrases Today we're living in times uh, in which Hallmark uh, is making more money than ever before because somebody else writes the little phrase uh, and we just sign our name to it. Uh, amen. And even today there's new therapy in which somebody else, uh, you pay about $75 per letter uh, and get someone else to write your love letters for you. That's happening in America at the moment uh, because uh, we have uh, not allowed that release within us uh, amen and likewise uh, God the people of God uh, are allowing uh, everyone else to express uh, their feelings for the Lord thank God we're living in a day in which uh, there's never been a day when there in which there have been more beautiful choruses uh, 
than the day in which we're living. I never heard such beautiful praise and worship choruses as today. Hallelujah. There's a lovely chorus that we can sing uh, that expresses anything that we want to express unto the Lord. But I still don't want somebody else to do it for me. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whether it's as beautiful as someone else's or not, I want to sing my own love songs to Jesus. I want my own expression to come from the depth of my own being. Hallelujah. I don't want to depend on another. Hallelujah. To have something to say concerning the Lord. Because these who wrote this beautiful uh, expression about the, the tongue being as the pen of a red writer they were those that prophesied in song hallelujah to the chief musicians upon Shoshanim for the sons of Korah Maskell, a song of loves amen hallelujah and we've got the same Holy Ghost Amen. Oh, the same Holy Ghost. We're living in a, in a greater age. Amen. We're living in a greater day. Praise the Lord. All 39 books of the old, uh, 38 of the 39 books of the Old Testament were all song books. Most of us know that the book of Psalms was a song book, but Every one of the books of the Old Testament was sung with the exception of the book of Job. Hallelujah. So if Isaiah can sing <laughs> and Jeremiah can sing, oh, hallelujah, and Hosea and Amos and all can sing, hallelujah, then we're going to sing too. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the word came forth that we, they could not be complete without us. Amen. Amen. All of the prophets and the people of the former day are incomplete. Without the people of our day, we are the ones that make up the crowning point of this period of man. Amen. Hallelujah. And if all of them could sing and express themselves unto the Lord, you and I have got to let God bring forth forth a release in the depth of our being my soul is bubbling over my heart is bubbling over with the king's matter oh hallelujah hallelujah I speak of the things that I have made touching the king my tongue is the pen of a ready writer hallelujah this is what the bridegroom says concerning the bride. I want you to read Song of Songs. <clears throat> Song of Songs, chapter 7. The bridegroom is speaking concerning the bride. The roof of thy mouth, like the best wine for my beloved that goeth down sweetly, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God is pouring into our lives an anointing. Amen. It's touching the roof of our mouths. Hallelujah. This is the best wine. We're living in the end time and the time in which he saves the best wine for last. Praise the Lord. And when this best wine begins to go down into our mouths, Mouths. Hallelujah. This, uh, this best wine as it goes down within you, uh, it causes the, the, the lips uh, of those that are asleep uh, 
to speak. Hallelujah. Amen. We are living in a, in a lethargic day in which people are uh, uh, sleeping or dozing. They may not be in a deep sleep, but there is sleep resting upon them. But God is bringing an awakening. Hallelujah. He's awakening our hearts. He's awakening our spirits. That awakening is to come come unto us and sometimes we're busy praying for the rest of the world to be awakened but when we truly are awakened unto God in every aspect in every area of our lives we're going to have that ability to awaken others amen hallelujah praise the Lord oh bless the Lord Oh, Hakabarishia. That uh, other phrase that comes in Song of Songs uh, in an earlier portion. Let me just see if I can see that. Uh, in which she says, uh, I sleep, but my heart waketh. Chapter 5, verse 2. Amen. Hallelujah. He, he, uh, he, I sleep, but my heart waketh. Uh, it is the voice of my beloved uh, that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, uh, my love, my dove, uh, my undefiled. Hallelujah. Oh, in the midst of the sleeping, God is bringing forth uh, an awakening. Uh, of our hearts unto the Lord. You can be wide awake as far as in the natural and yet not be awake in God. Amen. Amen. And yet you can be asleep on your bed in the night and have God give you an awakening in your spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. An awakening. Some of the greatest experiences I've had have been in the night season in which you are asleep, but your heart is awakened unto his voice, unto his call, unto the ministry of the Lord in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I sleep, but my heart waketh. Hallelujah. That wakening of the Lord in the depth of our being. Praise the Lord. Oh, Kurishi and I. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I noticed on the news the other day that Someone out in the Los Angeles area who's been sleeping on the street uh, has started writing poetry on the walls uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, and they were questioning concerning the fact that he, uh, even though he was sleeping on the street, uh, that he was able to write poetry. Uh, he was his uh, his uh, living conditions uh, his lifestyle uh, had nothing to do with that which was in his heart uh, that was awakening hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord and out of the depth of our being god is going to bring forth those hallelujah those lips are touched by the fire of the holy ghost an awakening within and an ability to express hallelujah those things that god is doing and saying unto us praise the lord hallelujah when we begin to sing spontaneously in Jerusalem, at first it was very easy to sing praise songs. Basically with a praise song, you just, you can sing another verb. The Lord heals. The next verse, He saves. He delivers. And one could go on and on with the with the verbs of what the Lord does when it came to the time that we wanted to worship and coming 
coming to the place in which we were less wordy and more interested in the person of the Lord and not his works. We found that folks had difficulty. We would sing a, a verse and people would sort of wait and try to think of something and because they had gotten so orientated to what he does. Amen. But the Lord wants us to bubble over concerning him. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Who he is. The matters concerning the king. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we had to reach into God and believe for a release. Some people found it difficult to say even words that are in the Bible like these words. Thou art fairer than the children of men. I mean to say to the Lord, you're beautiful. In former days, we didn't, uh, we didn't say so much like that. We did sing about the Lord being the lily of the valley and the bright morning star. And I hear that there's a new book on the market, someone that's quite known in charismatic circles. And he says, uh, he's saying that when... Uh, when people say that the lily of the valley and the bright morning star applies to Jesus, they're wrong. He's just not living in that realm of experience. Amen. If your soul has not bubbled over concerning the very person of the Lord, then you're not going to like these flowery terms, these terms that seemingly are poetic, that compare the Lord. Amen. I love that chorus that we sang. You are more precious than diamonds and you're more precious than silver and all more beautiful and that wonderful comparison concerning the Lord praise the Lord but uh, those that have not been awakened they're living in a realm of what the Lord does and not who he is oh hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord but he walks among us in his majesty he walks among us in his beauty he walks among us in his glory hallelujah oh bless the lord and when isaiah prophesied that there was no beauty that we should behold him he was prophesying of his crucifixion but we are now serving a resurrected lord Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He is so beautiful, hallelujah, and he wants us to be able to have words of love upon our lips to express it, amen, to the Lord. I don't know why it always is we think everybody else can praise and worship better than we. And there are those that we think, oh my, when that sister sings in the spirit, heaven comes down into our, into the midst of us. Uh, everybody always feels that someone else does it better. But remember this, they can't do it for us. If the Lord were just looking for the one that could do it the best, he already has David. Amen. Hallelujah. 
But oh, thank God, it is the individual response of everyone. And what David sang and how David praised and how David danced and how David worshipped is not enough for 1990. He wants to hear your praises. He wants your expressions of love. He wants your worship from the innermost part of your being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, Handarabashiandai. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. It's not the vocabulary. It's the bubbling of the heart. <laughs> Amen. When we went to Jerusalem initially, <clears throat> we were loaned the use of a beautiful Catholic church on Mount Zion. And when we were, went there for service, it was an ecumenical experience that was beyond anything that was happening in the city. We didn't know how long we would be there. First, we didn't know how long they would allow us to stay and worship in the church. And we were so thrilled for the privilege to be worshiping on Mount Zion that we told the Lord that we would praise Him with all that was within us in every meeting. And there were a few nights that were so cold. These beautiful stone churches with wonderful mosaics on the inside. They're magnificent, but I tell you when they're on the side of a mountain and the wind is blowing and there's no heat on the inside, they can be very cold. But we remembered what we said to the Lord that we didn't want to look back if we were there a few weeks, a few months, no matter how long we were there. We didn't want to look back and, and see that we hadn't poured out with all that was within us every opportunity and occasion that we were there on Mount Zion. And the nights that we lagged a little bit to begin with, the Holy Spirit always reminded us that we had promised Him to praise with all that is within us and we never that I can remember ever left the church without having given it all that we had. Amen. And that relationship didn't continue just a few weeks. Almost 10 years we had that relationship with the St. Peter and Gallicantu and the privilege of where Peter denied the Lord. We had the privilege of affirming night after night how beautiful the Lord is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That experience has been wonderful for me because I try never to ever come to a service. And it doesn't matter. We have been, we have had now for years in Jerusalem prayer meeting every day. There are times when there's a holiday and no transportation and people can't come to the prayer meeting that there are three or four of us there. The song God gave me, Jerusalem, a house of prayer for all nations, was the New Year's Day and there was no transportation and there were three of us at prayer meeting, all of us that lived in the same house. But we sat down and began to give it all we had. Amen. Hallelujah. And God honored us and gave us that song. Jerusalem, the house of prayer for all nations. What am I saying? If you determine to have that bubbling up in your heart and in your soul, God will always see that it's there. Amen. 
There are times you press through for five minutes or more. At the beginning of a meeting, you might have to press through the problems of the day, the cares of life, uh, uh, the feelings. Maybe you're not feeling too well. You're a little weary, a little tired. You might have to press through. Hallelujah, but it's worth it because suddenly as you press through, God turns on the bubble machine. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, there's something within me that's bubbling up. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord, something within me that's bubbling up. I speak concerning those things that pertain to the king. <laughs> My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. On our piano in Jerusalem, I put a blank book at the beginning of every year. <clears throat> and I sit down every day and I write. Today would be Saturday, February the 17th, 1990. And as the Spirit of God begins to move, and out of this mouth of a baby or suckling comes forth a beautiful phrase in adoration of our Lord, something I've never heard before. I jot it down. I have at the end of every year these wonderful notebooks that have come forth in the prayer meeting. I don't write everything but a, a phrase, a, a bubbling. I write the bubblings up. Amen. Hallelujah. I write the overflowings. And I will say from experience that the greatest things I've ever heard have always come in the anointing of praise and worship and adoration. And they haven't always come just from the mature you know why because when we get too experienced we're too worried about our reputations just to let something flow amen if we haven't considered it you know and thought it out and made sure but I always say I like a little spiritual stutter I like a little, doesn't distress me when somebody gets up and has a little spiritual stutter. They start to say something and they're reaching for the next word and there's a little stammer or stutter there. It lets me know it's God. Amen. It lets me know they haven't said it exactly that way all of their lives. It lets me know it's not preconceived thinking. It lets me know that I haven't sat and tried to figure it out. It lets me know they're flowing in the Spirit of God. They're letting the bubbles come forth. And if you've ever blown bubbles, listen, every bubble is not full blown. You get some that come out half blown. Hallelujah. But even the half blown ones come out as beauty in their colors and in their death iridescence amen hallelujah praise the Lord out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise <laughs> oh hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord I have been taught more by listening to people praising the Lord in recent years than in any other way and my life has been enhanced with beauty because as they've brought out of their own good treasure their very best to offer to Jesus 
I've sat and gotten the overflow. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I've been blessed with the overflow. I've been blessed, amen, as they brought out their scintillating little jewels and said, Jesus, is this acceptable? Amen. He's been so pleased. Amen. With every word of praise and worship and adoration to the Lord. He's not the school teacher. Amen. You know, in the natural, we live lives so much of being corrected continually that sometimes we think he's the same way. He's not. Amen. He's not. I love that phrase. He said, neither do I condemn thee. The Son of Man came not into the world to condemn the world. He's not checking and grading your effort. Oh, no. That's what the school teachers are doing. Your mom and dad might do it. Amen. And sometimes when, you're, well, when your parents are elderly and you're you're still being graded, but he's not doing that. Oh, oh, hallelujah. He is so thrilled. Hallelujah. With all that we pour out unto him, he anoints us with oil that our cups may overflow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he loves the overflow. Until it overflows, we don't say very much. Amen. We're able to contain ourselves. We're able to keep it in. We're able to be quiet. But with the overflow, we say, well, I just couldn't contain myself anymore. I had to say that. Oh, Pariyashandai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. There's not a person here that doesn't want to hear the word, I love you, because it's common. Amen. It's because it's spoken on the lips of someone that feels it and means it. That when the words are said, they take on new meaning and have life within them and minister unto you. And that's the same way with Jesus. He'll never, ever get tired of hearing us say, I love you. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, if, uh, if you don't have another phrase to say and that's what you feel, go ahead and say it 10,000 times. I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you. Oh, pariyashandai. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My heart is bubbling over. He's awakening our hearts to cause them to bubble, to bubble over, to bubble forth. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's the words that come forth from someone who sincerely, genuinely loves him that touches the heart of another. You folks have heard me tell the story <clears throat> concerning my friend Fuchsia Pickett in Dallas. She was a professor at Asbury College, taught New Testament Greek, Old Testament Hebrew. And when the charismatic renewal touched Asbury College, Methodist College, she went into the chapel one day. <clears throat> and as she went in, she wanted to come into the pew and there was a young 
young student that was sitting on the edge. She was weeping. The student was weeping and saying, I love you, Lord. And Fuchsia tried to get her attention so she could walk past and sit on the pew next to her. She couldn't get her attention. This young girl, I love you, Lord. Sister Fuchsia Pickett tapped her on the shoulder trying to get her attention. The more she tried, the more oblivious this girl was. She was just worshiping the Lord. Here this woman with tremendous success in life. She began to weep and cry. She said, Jesus, I don't love you like she loves you. Lord, I want an experience. I want to love you like she loves you. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. God gave her an She was challenged by someone that loved God. Oh, bless the Lord. She, God gave her an experience in which it seemed that she was under a cloud of glory for several years. Even when she would go to the door to answer the door if the milkman or the mailman or some delivery person came to the door, they would always say, excuse me. We didn't mean to interrupt your praying. She said, oh, I wasn't praying. But it always felt to the delivery people that she was praying because there was a cloud of the presence of God that was over her and surrounded her. Hallelujah. It was her love for God that kept that, that relationship in that fine point where everyone could feel the glory of God. Oh, Pariyashandai. Hallelujah. Oh, in Revelation, the message to the church was, I have somewhat against you because you have left your first love. First love experience is dynamic and vital and God wants us to live in that relationship of a first love experience with him hallelujah he wants to anoint our lips and cause them to speak forth his praises and his glory hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah and our heavenly father i bless this people in the name of the lord i bless them unto an excellence in thee Lord, I believe thee for a new awakening. I believe thee for new utterance for everyone here this afternoon. A new ability in God to speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, cause the mouths of those who are asleep to speak to speak forth your praise, your honor, your majesty, your glory. And Lord, let us not judge ourselves by another, but teach us how to be shut away with thee, not to be embarrassed, Lord. Oh, Pakaria Shandai, but give us that ability to have tongues as pens of ready writers. Oh, Babarishi and I, touch our souls afresh. Touch our spirits afresh. Touch us, O oh Lord, afresh. This very day we pray. Oh, Kalamandai. Hallelujah. 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 T.C. Alamandai. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Could we gather here at the front? Horabiando. Hallelujah. Sister Keturah, come and we'll sing Awaken My Heart again. Oh, bless the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Just, just you folks can just stand at the altar. We're going to reach in. Awaken my heart to love and adore thee, oh my Lord. Awaken my heart to love 